Thank you, Mr. Bain. There's no political divide, excuse me, there's no political divide in the desire to grapple with the perennial issue of childhood poverty and child hunger. You can describe child poverty as a perennial since the definition of child po poverty is a relative term. A child growing up in a household whose income is less than 60% of the national median. So it is as much a commentary on the spread of household earnings as an indicator of want. But childhood hunger is an absolute. Either you are or you are not. And no child in this country should be hungry. Reasons for childhood hunger are complex and it will hamper our ability properly to address those causes if we choose for political or campaigning reasons to oversimplify them. They include unemployment, a sudden change of family income, chaotic finances, drug dependency, poor access to good quality food shops, poor food education, the breakdown of relationships, and low pay in employment. Now, I don't have time today to go into the raft of government measures that have supported children and families through COVID and beyond, but I do want to focus on overall income, because if these are the causes of child hunger, then the solution to the majority of them is to focus on the overall income of low-income families. I say this because providing for one's children is at the heart of what it is to be a parent. If the state takes responsibility away, it also takes away dignity and self-reliance. It diminishes parenthood. As a parent myself, one of the key life lessons I try to give my own children is that of personal responsibility. And so we should be wary of intervening in such a way as to undermine the ability of parents to do the same, storing up, as it will, trouble for the next generation of parents. So the government must make sure that employment truly is the answer to food insecurity. For this to be the case, it simply needs to pay enough. I am glad that it was a Conservative government that introduced a national, uh, national living wage, and it's right that the government should build on the early foundations to increase the national living wage over a time frame that allows businesses to adapt their models to accommodate it. This year, the national living wage has increased above inflation yet again to £8.91 per hour, and it will continue to grow until it reaches £10.50 by 2024, two-thirds of median earnings, enough to lift families above the definition of child poverty. And I echo the comments of the Honourable Member for Ryslip and Northwood, uh, where he says that it is local authorities are best placed to help the most vulnerable families. But for many others, universal credit as a stepping stone to readily available employment as, at a wage that is enough to get on with the basics of life are the policies that will help lift most families out of food insecurity. I look forward to publishing the, the publishing of the part two of the National Food Security Paper, and I welcome the government's undertaking to produce a white paper within six weeks of its delivery. However, when seeking to provide long-term solutions to child hunger, I hope that the review will bear in mind the value and responsibility of parenthood and make sure that its recommendations support parents in their role as the most important teachers of the next generation. Beth Winter.